If you're like me and you've been using a 2018 iPad Pro since, well, 2018, as the design hasn't really changed at all and the upgrades haven't been that significant aside from the performance, oh boy, you're in for a treat. 2024 is when we'll finally get that big iPad Pro upgrade that we've all been waiting for. So here's a recap of the biggest changes coming alongside a couple of fresh details since our last video from July. And if you are planning to get this new 2024 iPad Pro or any iPad for that matter, I highly recommend you check out Paperlike. Paperlike's new cleaning kit is the ultimate screen cleaning accessory, now redesigned with refillable palettes, offering up to 500 cleanings and made to last up to 10 years. The sleeker design and tough hard shell casing makes the cleaning kit a must-have for traveling too. So if you're planning on buying an iPad for Christmas, definitely do check Paperlike out, as their cleaning kit and their screen protector will make using your iPad a far more enjoyable experience. Okay, so the first and probably the biggest change is going to be the switch to OLED. So based on initial reports that I've already covered in our previous videos, Apple is working on a dual stacked OLED panel that can provide a much higher level of brightness than the current tablet OLED panels, which usually max out between 400 to 600 nits of sustained brightness. Therefore, the 2024 12.9 inch iPad Pro will now get even better black levels without the bloom effect that the mini LED panel was causing at the same 1000 nit sustained brightness, or even higher. The bigger upgrade though is on the 11 inch model, which is currently still using an LCD display. Having OLED, even if it's just a non-stack panel, will be a gigantic upgrade, turning the gray blacks into perfect blacks and giving us significantly more contrast and pop. And according to some new reports, the production of OLED displays will begin in February, which tells me that we're very likely going to see these new iPad Pros being announced at a 2024 Apple March event. These OLED displays are said to be much thinner, as they will be combining the flexible OLED panel with a glass above it. The fact that they're being made thinner could mean that Apple wants to keep the thickness of the iPad Pros the same as before, as combining these two thinner OLED panels could have the same thickness as the current LCD and mini LED displays. Apple is also said to be ordering around 10 million OLED panels for the 2024 iPad Pros, with LG supplying 60% of the panels, with the remaining 40% being supplied by Samsung for the 11-inch model only. In 2022 alone, Apple sold 60 million iPads, which means that they're planning for a sixth of their 2022 sales to just be on the iPad Pros in 2024. And since we are getting OLED, we could also see some new features such as an always on display and possibly even a dynamic island in order to make the bezels much thinner and also give us the same functionality as we have on the iPhone, which would further push the sales. The second big upgrade is the M3 chip. No surprises here, as we already knew that this was happening. But now that we have the M3 chip inside the new MacBook Pros, we do have a better idea of the improvements that we'll be seeing here. First, the addition of hardware-based ray tracing will seriously improve games and apps that support it. Blender, for example, would actually make a lot of sense on the iPad now. Second, the M3 chip is more power efficient, so we could see some battery life improvements here that finally take us over that 10-hour claim that Apple has been giving us literally since the very first iPad. And third, the overall performance of the M3 chip has actually been pretty impressive, with 1.3 times faster exports in Lightroom, 1.57 times faster in Blender, and 1.85 times faster when using ray tracing. Obviously, you're unlikely to be doing these intensive tasks on an iPad Pro, but having this extra level of performance will give it a longer life cycle. And when apps do get updated to take advantage of this extra performance, you will definitely notice the upgrade. And I'm also quite curious to see if we also end up getting more RAM, as the M3 MacBook Pro did actually struggle with just 8GB of RAM in more complex Final Cut projects. With the M2 iPad Pros, you did get 16GB of RAM with a 1TB and 2TB models. I would love to see Apple give this option to everyone, just like you can already configure a MacBook. And speaking of storage, TechReve claims that the highest tier storage will now be 4 terabytes up from 2. This will of course be an overkill for an iPad, but for those of you who store and edit ProRes files, 
maybe you'll find it useful. Also, if you're looking for some high quality wallpapers, we've got you covered. Our November packs for our app wallpapers are now all out. We launched eight stunning packs, which brings the total number to 26 packs. That's 260 stunning wallpapers in total made by our talented designers. And today we are launching our first two new packs for December. Stormy Sorrows by Arif, featuring these stunning hand-painted designs, and Pastel Pastures by Anya, a super minimal pack with some super cute pastel landscape wallpapers. Try both packs now in Wallpapers today, and if you enjoy wallpapers, it would help us a lot if you could leave a review on the App Store and the Play Store. Another change is said to be a redesigned Magic Keyboard according to Mark Gurman. This will have a new design, with the keyboard area being made out of aluminium rather than silicone. And this does make a lot of sense. Not only will the new Magic Keyboard make the iPad Pro look more of like a MacBook now, but on the current version, Apple had to add some sheets of metal inside the base to weigh it down, as otherwise the iPad would simply tumble over as it is heavier than the base. So having those metal plates on the outside would have the same functional purpose, but with a more premium design. And when it comes to the back, Mark Gurman claims that it will still be made out of the same material as the current model, which does make sense as that part does need to be very light to keep the iPad from tumbling over. And the trackpad is also said to be bigger and more similar to the one on the MacBooks. However, the only way to do that is to get rid of the current floating design, which does leave a lot of space on the top. So Apple could push the entire keyboard upwards, and in that case, they will indeed have enough room to make the trackpad bigger. I personally found the 11-inch Magic Keyboard trackpad to be quite usable, actually, but I definitely wouldn't mind having a larger one, especially when using gestures. Now, the second-gen Apple Pencil hasn't been updated since 2018, so we could also see a new Apple Pencil here. Leaker, Mai Jin Boo, reported back in September that a new Apple Pencil 3 will feature interchangeable magnetic tips. Now, unless you're a graphic designer, you wouldn't really need those. The newly released USB-C version of the Apple Pencil is mostly made for writing, as it does lack pressure sensitivity, which is a must-have for graphic designers. Therefore, if what Mai Jin Boo is saying is true, those magnetic tips are definitely for the third-gen Apple Pencil. And on top of this, Apple has also applied for a patent that lets the Apple Pencil sample colors from the real world. This would be a game changer for graphic designers, as they could use a color board to get the exact colors that they want onto their digital art. Another change is going to be a new design. Now, Mark Gurman reported on this a few years ago, a glass back iPad Pro to allow for wireless charging. This is unlikely to happen anymore, as number one, we haven't really heard anything about it in years, and number two, a glass back would not only make the iPad Pro less durable, but it will also make it considerably heavier. However, I do still believe that we will see some design changes. Whether those are just thinner bezels or some new colors, I do believe that Apple will change something visually uh, to give this new iPad Pro generation a distinct new look. Something that is very likely to change here is the Apple logo orientation, from portrait to landscape, in order to make it look nicer when used in landscape orientation with a keyboard. There were some reports on this too. And alongside this, the Face ID camera was also rumored to change to landscape, just like on the 10th gen iPad, making it far more suitable for video calls when you have the keyboard attached. All of these sound great. However, they will not come in cheap. According to all major sources, the 2024 iPad Pro will see a significant price increase, with the 11 inch model being priced as high as $1,500 from $800 and the 12.9-inch model being priced at $1,800 from $1,100. Personally, I don't think they will go up by this much unless Apple somehow bundles in a Magic Keyboard. But we do know that Apple's OLED displays are much more expensive than ordinary OLED panels, so we will definitely see some price increases here. And this is why Apple is releasing that 12.9-inch version of the iPad Air as they want to give users a more affordable 12.9-inch iPad, now that the iPad Pro will be going up in price. We have made a video about the 12.9-inch iPad Air, which you can watch right here, and stay tuned for more Leaks and Rumors episodes. I'm Daniel, this means Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.